Good afternoon, and welcome to the podcast download presented by Cumulus Media and Signal Hill Insights. The fall report we'll be presenting today is the ninth edition of our study, focusing in on weekly podcast listeners. I'm Thomas Houck, the Director of Digital Partnerships at the Cumulus Podcast Network, and I'll be your host for this webinar. Today, we'll be covering podcast listener trends, platform usage, audience preferences and engagement, plus some brand new findings on the podcast watchers and co-listening habits. At the end of the webinar, we've saved time to answer any questions you may have. Please type your questions in the chat box and our presenters will address them during the Q&A. This report and video will be sent to all attendees this week. You'll be able to find both the report and the video posted on the Westwood One blog, where you can also subscribe to our weekly Audio Insights newsletter. Before we begin, I'd love to introduce you to Cumulus Media. Cumulus Media is the largest audio network in the United States, which includes our broadcast, streaming, and podcast platforms, both on the national and local level. The Cumulus Podcast Network is the fifth largest podcast network with 114 million monthly downloads and 13 million uniques. We have an enormous variety of podcasts across our key content pillars, such as news, sports, business money tech, and lifestyle and entertainment. Across all of our platforms, we're working with our advertising partners in a variety of different ways, utilizing our talent and their engaged audiences to deliver successful and integrated brand campaigns. Now for an intro to our presenters. First up is Jeff Fiddler, founder and president of Signal Hill Insights. Jeff's career has kept him at the forefront of the changing audio landscape, spending the last 25 years in research, sharing his passion for audio with North America's major broadcast companies, continuing his work and expertise recently with podcast pub publishers and advertisers. Jeff, we're so happy to have you. Thank you, Thomas. Looking forward to this. And Laura Vitrano, VP of Advertiser Measurement and Insights here at Cumulus Media. Coming up on 10 years at the company, Lauren is part of the Audio Active Group, a marketing advisor team for clients specializing in creative best practices, media planning, and measurement through advertiser case studies. I'm going to pass it off to Lauren to kick off this exciting study. Hi everyone, thanks Thomas for our, that lovely intro. Uh, today we're gonna to be taking you through the podcast download. As Thomas mentioned, this is the ninth installment of the series which dates back to our inaugural version back in 2017. A quick look at our methodology here. Uh, this study was fielded online using a nationally representative sample of 603 respondents. They met the following criteria. They had to be 18 years or older. They had to spend at least an hour listening to or watching podcasts within the past week. We had some uh, limits in there in terms of what occupation they could have. We didn't want anyone in media or marketing. And the surveys were conducted the end of September through October 4th. One thing to note about the watching group, this is the second time that respondents could qualify by saying they could watch a podcast. We'll note this again uh, as we go on on another slide, but we did want to point out that in total, 7% of the sample say that they've watched but not listened. And now a quick look at our key takeaways that we'll go through. The first, Spotify and YouTube are the leading podcast platforms. Due to the growing interest in video, YouTube has really been propelled to tie Spotify as the most used platform by weekly podcast listeners. The heavy listeners continue to use Spotify the most and podcast pioneers are gonna use Apple Podcasts the most, likely because they've been using it for so many years. Watchable podcasts have grown in popularity. More listeners prefer a video now, either actively watching it or minimizing it and having it playing in the background versus audio only experiences. Weekly podcast listeners are listening with children. There is co-listening happening. 20% of weekly podcast listeners with children say they listened with, with their children frequently. Brand safety is in the eye of the listener. We're gonna talk about objectionable content and how podcast listeners really don't complain about it as they're the ones that are responsible for picking out the content they're listening to. And we're gonna discuss podcast video ads and how you can find an attentive alternative to linear TV 
as our listeners watch video podcasts and they say that their eyes are on the screen when ads are playing versus what Nielsen's reported in one of their studies with linear TV. And now Jeff, would you like to take us through the other key takeaways? Gladly. Um, podcast advertising, one of its superpowers is that it does uh, reach those hard to reach ad free video streamers. Um, uh, podcast listeners um, are on demand consumers and they're also heavy viewers of ad free video streaming services. So that means you're reaching an audience that um, isn't exposed to ads as much as um, some other targets. Um, podcast listeners you know, are deeply engaged with the podcast. They love interacting with the favorite hosts uh, and on their favorite podcasts. Uh, they will follow the hosts on social media. Um, they have plans to attend live podcast events um, and, you know, paid subscriptions. Um, you know, when they're considering those, and this is interesting, they value content and access ahead of the ad-free experience, which opens up some interesting opportunities. Um, Podcast genres do differ between those podcast watchers and the podcast listeners. Um, we do see that those who prefer podcasts with a video component tend to favor um, music and health podcasts more than those who prefer audio only. Uh, those who prefer audio only um, uh, you know, are more likely to listen to true crime podcasts. Um, advertiser use of podcast ads is growing, as everybody knows um, in the industry. The revenues have been climbing dramatically over the last few years. And the advertiser perception study that we will uh, share with you today, some uh, results from that survey show that, and this has been going on for seven years, that you know the use of podcasts by advertisers has jumped from 15% of advertisers seven years ago to 61% this year. That's up 16 points in the past year alone, even with pandemic and coming into a, you know, a, a likely recession. Um, and finally, um, we'll talk a little bit about the opportunity for funny and entertaining ads. Uh, there's a gap to close here. Um, podcast listeners are very receptive to ads in general, um, and, and, but they, you know, they like funny and entertaining podcasts, um, but what they're seeing is more, uh, what they're hearing, pardon me, is, is more typically uh, features and benefits for very rational podcast ads. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about what that opportunity looks like. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, so this is what I was talking about before a look at the podcast universe in the study. So 93% of the weekly listeners we have have listened to podcasts in the last week. That light blue sliver, that's the 7% who have only watched in the past week. Uh, and this is a new addition to the study where we've included that distinction over the past two years. Um, expanding that definition has added that 7% of people who might have been uh, dis disqualified from the study had they only been listening. Uh, this is a look at two of the ways we're going to define podcast listeners as we go throughout. So we're going to talk about heavy listeners and weekly listeners. Uh, the weekly on the left, they're comprised of 26% of America, and they have listened or watched one hour in the past week. The heavy listeners have consumed six or more hours in the past week, and they're 13% of America. Some more definitions just so you know what to expect as we go through. The heavy listeners, again, those are the ones who've listened or watched six hours of podcasts in the past week. We're also going to look at listeners based on when they started to listen, based on their origin timeline. So we have our podcast pioneers, and they've started listening four more years ago. Then we have our newcomers who've started to listen in the past year. And then we have that middle group, the two to three years ago. We're going to focus mostly on the pioneers and newcomers as we go through the deck. When we talk about distribution platforms, we're referring to any place where podcasts are available, so Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. When we talk about Apple, we're referring to iTunes or Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts. That's going to include Google Play or Google Podcasts. Now we're going to take you through a brief profile of who the weekly listener is. Uh, first, one broad theme we saw about the podcast pioneers, and they spend more time with podcasts and they consume more episodes. And then when you look at the newcomers, they tend to be younger and they skew more female. This is an overview of the state of the weekly podcast listener. So as a reminder, up at the top, it's the profile of the 26% of Americans who are weekly podcast listeners. They've consumed an hour or more a week. 
And what we found is that half of this weekly group are also heavy podcast listeners. So on the left there, they've consumed six or more hours per week. So this is definitely a group that's really consuming a ton of podcasts in terms of time spent and what they're listening to, how many episodes and how many shows. They're consuming eight hours weekly on average, and they're taking 6.6 .6 episodes of podcasts across 5.3 different shows. So they're listening to a wide variety of programs. They're not really sticking to just one. Demographic wise, this is a look at the profile of them. Up in the left-hand corner, we have the age. They tend to skew millennial, 1834, almost half. Mean age is 38.5, and it does tend to trickle off when you get older, only 20% fall in the 50 plus group. Gender, it's a pretty even split that does skew slightly more male, but very close to 50-50. 42% of our weekly group fell in that podcast pioneer bucket, starting to listen four more years ago. And a third, 33% are in the newcomers who come to podcasts within the last year. On the left, we have our podcast pioneers, and on the right are our newcomers. And this is a look just at the gender composition. Uh, overall, the trends are the podcast pioneers tend to be more male, 62%, and the newcomers tend to be more female. So females are coming to the medium. And podcast pioneers have a habit more than podcast newcomers. So the lighter blue, those are our newcomers, the darker are our pioneers. And overall, you see higher numbers across the board. So our podcast pioneers are listening to more podcasts. They're 1.3 times more likely to be a heavy listener. They spend 16% more time with podcasts on an average weekly basis, and they listen to 38% more podcast episodes. So this is really a group that is highly engaged and they're consuming as much as they can. While podcast newcomers consume a little less, they are still consuming a ton of content, 5.6. Uh, average episodes in the past week is still a very high number. For the number of shows that they listen to, uh, podcast pioneers listen to more than newcomers, so it's 5.9 versus 5.1. But the heavy listeners have them both beat with 7.1 weekly shows um, on average. And then just showing at the bottom there, how many podcast shows have they listened to in the past week? Most fall in that one to three group, half, 52% but a massive uh, percentage of them, 38%, also listen to three to nine shows per week. And podcast newcomers are not the only ones finding new podcasts to listen to. This is a brand new question we asked for the first time this year. We asked, uh, have you started listening to any new podcasts over the past three months? So the newcomers, obviously they're coming to podcasts, so they are gonna you know, seek out new programs, find out what they like, 60%. But podcast pioneers, they're up there too. 43% of them have started to listen to new podcasts in the past three months. So while they are pioneers who have been listening for a long time, they're not stuck in their ways. They are still looking out for new content. And now Jeff is going to take over and discuss another new topic that we cover, co-listening. And parents are a very <clears throat> unique aspect of advertising target for um, podcasts. Um, Lauren, you were saying earlier, 80% of weekly podcast listeners are between 18 and 49. Well, that's also the age of parents. So uh, if you look at the podcast audience in general, you're over-representing parents. So this, we wanted to get an idea of, do parents, you know, uh, do they, you know, have kids, do they listen to podcasts with their kids or not? And one thing you can see off the top, and there's a real difference here between uh, the top bar, which is no children in the household and those who have children in the household. The question we asked of all the podcast listening you do, what percentage would you say you do by yourself and with others? Those with no children in the household, 90% of their listening is done by themselves. But if they have children in the household, well, they spread it out a little bit more um, and, and, and do, in fact, um, involve children, and the kids as part of that. 48%, in, in fact, say that they have at some point listened to a podcast with their kids, um, and 20% um, say they do it uh, frequently with their children. Um, now, you know, what's interesting is when you actually look at podcast genres, kids and family is still actually a pretty small category um, of listening, but with this much listening going on with parents um, who, and, and who are overrepresented in podcast listening, there does seem to be an opportunity there. 
Um, but nonetheless, you know, the, one of the really key things to keep in mind is, and this is an important set in itself, people listen to podcasts by themselves. It's a very kind of solitary, um, um, intentional um, kind of listening. Weekly podcast listeners, on average, eight, say that 87% of the time that they listen uh, to podcasts, they're listening by themselves. The heavy podcast listeners, a little bit more likely to share with others, but again, more than 80% of their time uh, spent uh, listening by themselves. Um, and, and why that's kind of important is um, it, it really represents what makes podcasts somewhat different from other types of media. You know, unlike television or radio or social media, which are push media, um, you know, you might come across content that surprises you or upsets you or you find objectionable because it's part of the, lin the linear experience of, of listening. With podcasts, um, podcast listeners listen by themselves. They have hundreds of thousands of podcasts to choose from. So the podcasts that they listen to, they're not surprised by what they hear. Um, they're really quite comfortable with that. And we see that reflected in some of the questions we ask. 73% um, of weekly podcast listeners have no problem listening to podcasts with language that might be considered unsuitable or objectionable. Again, they wouldn't be listening to that podcast if you know they were upset by that. Um, only 27% said they would turn off um, the podcast if they did hear that unsuitable language. Um, and, and even true crime, which has always been one of those areas that, you know, sometimes advertisers have concern about, um, only 7% um, say that, you know, even if there's a disclaimer about graphic content or language, that they would turn that podcast off. So again, podcasting is a pull medium. People are listening to content that they have chosen and that they're comfortable with. And, you know, that, you know, at least at that level, um, it means that advertisers can have some comfort um, that the listener is not going to come across content that they weren't expecting. Now we're going to talk about how podcasts are a growing platform. This slide here is from Edison Research. So they release Share of Year, which is a daily a uh, look at all time spent with audio. They look at share of radio, podcasts, music videos on YouTube, any kind of audio a person would consume their tracking in this study. Uh, so this is a trend going back to 2016 for the daily reach of podcasts. And we're looking here at the 1849 group. From 2016 to 2019, there was steady growth. It went from 9% to 15%. But where you really saw the jump was from 2019 through 2022. We're at an all-time high there at 28% for daily reach. So podcasts, even though they are very popular, they're only gaining popularity as we go. And when we look back at our survey, which we did last time, April 22 versus this in October, we saw that weekly podcast listeners are listening more too. So on the left, those are the podcast shows growing 11% from April. And on the right, that's episodes. So they are listening now to 5% more episodes. There doesn't seem to be any stopping when it comes to consuming more content among this group. And our heavy listeners are also at an all-time high. So the group that we look at in the study, those who consume six or more hours per week, started out in 2019. It made up 36% of the sample. And now it's grown here to 39% at an all-time high. Uh, they're listening to content and they're listening to a lot of it. And now Jeff's going to take us through some more platform stuff. Thank you. Um, the platform wars, we've called it in the past, because we've seen a lot of change um, over the you know, past four, three or four years since we've been tracking. Um, and you know, one of the things that we're seeing this time is that podcast newcomers are helping to sort of propel the growth of video podcasts and of YouTube um, as a podcast platform. Um, and just taking a look, first of all, at the sort of pattern from July 2019 download, um, to what we're seeing now. Um, and if you look at these bars, this is, represents the listening divided between the big three uh, platforms for podcast listening, YouTube on the left, Spotify in the dark blue in the middle, and Apple Podcasts in the gray in the right. And you can see the change that we've seen in really just three years. Um, when we, in July 2019, Apple Podcasts had a 29% share of podcasts listened to most often. Um, it was followed by Spotify at 16% and then YouTube at 15%. Over that period of time, YouTube has grown by about 50% to 22%. And meanwhile, um, 
Apple Podcasts uh, have dropped back 18% in the October stage is a little bit higher actually than they were in April, but um, but you can see the, a big change there as well. And of course, Spotify has also grown over that same period of time. So we, one thing that's interesting to look at is just to compare, you know, or what is what we're seeing in this study an anomaly or is it something that's backed up by other studies as well? So um, on the left, these are the results um, we just showed you on the previous slide. Um, a podcast listened to most often, YouTube, 22%, Spotify, 22%, and Apple, 18%. So we compared the results um, from that to a study that we conduct, um, a survey we conduct in support of the Triton Digital Podcast Metrics Demos Plus a study. Um, and that's, we've surveyed then over 12,000 surveys in the past year. Um, and we see very much the same pattern here. YouTube, just a hair above Spotify as podcasts listen to, the platform listen to most often and, and Apple podcasts kind of trailing behind. Now, looking at them by some of these different groups, you really do see some different patterns. And, and it really does tell a lot about sort of how the, um, podcast landscape has developed over the last few years. Um, if you look on the left at podcast newcomers, these are the people who started listening to podcasts in the last year. Um, Spotify, YouTube, well ahead of Apple Podcasts among those newcomers. So the newcomers are coming in um, through Spotify and, and YouTube. The podcast pioneers in the middle, these are the people who started listening at least four years ago. Apple Podcasts still number one um, with that audience. Um, followed by Spotify and, and, and then by YouTube. So you can see that shift that we saw earlier. The Apple Podcast listeners still, um, who started back four years ago, are still listening to Apple Podcasts for the most part, um, but, but certainly newcomers are, are bringing in more Spotify and YouTube listeners. And among the heavy podcast listeners, those who listen at least six hours in the past week, right now it's Spotify in the lead. Um, so looking at the podcast newcomers in particular, this is where you really do see um, how Spotify has, you know, has grown over that period of time. So July um, 2019, still, even with the newcomers, people who are coming to podcasts for the first time, Apple still had the lion's share of that. And that's fallen quite dramatically over that same period of time. Now the newcomers coming into podcasting are more likely to be YouTube listeners, but also even more dramatically likely to be Spotify, uh, use, use Spotify. Um, so again, those newcomers are really helping to move things forward for YouTube and for Spotify as well. Looking at the profile of the different platform users, um, looking at it by um, um, YouTube on the left, just the column gives you the profile by age and by gender and by um, when they first started listening to podcasts, uh, Spotify in the middle and Apple Podcasts on the right. And here you can see some, some pretty big differences. We've highlighted those for you. Um, you know, Spotify, much younger. Um, it's a music streaming platform, fundamentally. Um, so it is a bit younger. 66% are 18 to 34. Um, it also skews male, 61% um, uh, of the Spotify um, um, people who listen to Spotify platform most often are, are males. And the other thing that we say, and we saw it earlier, is Apple Podcasts, they are more likely to be, much more likely to be um, podcast pioneers having listened to the podcasts for at least four years. 58% of the Apple Podcast um, primary listeners are um, podcast pioneers. The next thing we're going to cover is an area we're really excited about. Um, we actually have a blog up on our westwoodone.com website if you'd like to go read further. Uh, but we're going to talk about podcast watching and how it's a growing segment of the podcast consumption. This is a look at a uh, preference. So it's important to note that this is asking what they prefer, not their actual behavior. Uh, we asked them a very simple question. How do you prefer to listen to podcasts? And they were given three options, audio only, actively watching a video or having a video playing, whether that's in the background or minimized on their device. 43% uh, do still prefer the audio only experience. So there is still a large number of podcast listeners who prefer that. But one in three, a third of them do prefer to actively watch a video. So this is an area that podcasts, podcasters need to pay attention to as this is growing. And that 29% of people who prefer having the video, they might not be watching the entire time, they might not watch at all, but they do prefer to have that video option there. They might glance at it, they might watch partially. Uh, that's something also to keep in mind that there is this opportunity to potentially reach another 29% of people on video. 
We work with advertiser perceptions. They are the gold standard in uh, advertiser sentiment. They question, they survey uh, agencies and marketers to find out their feelings and what they perceive about the industry. And we wanted to find out what they thought America's preferences are when it came to watchable podcasts. So on the left-hand side, that's the same information we showed on the previous slide. Those are the actual preferences. And on the right, that's what the advertisers and agencies, there were 300 of them, believed. So they were pretty close to what was actually happening uh, in terms of listener preference. They did think slightly more listeners preferred audio only, and they did undershoot slightly those who prefer video, but all in all, very close to what is actually happening. And when it comes to YouTube, half of the time people watch a video while listening and 43% of the time they're listening to audio without watching. Uh, what this means is you really need to pay attention to YouTube, even if you're a podcast without necessarily a full-fledged video strategy or stream, you do want to be on YouTube. People are on there all the time looking at recipe videos and animal videos. And it's a really great place for podcast discovery because as it shows here, 43% of people are going there to listen. So if you're on YouTube, you're gonna be in that stream and they'll be able to find your podcast. When it comes to watchable videos, we also look at podcast newcomers and our pioneers. And the podcast newcomers have slightly more interest in watchable videos. Uh, and podcast pioneers, they tend to prefer the audio only slightly more. We spent a lot of time with podcasts and they were listening back when video really wasn't involved in the equation. So 47% of our pioneers do still prefer audio only, but that preference for watching video or at least having that video there is still present. And among our weekly verse heavies, the weekly po podcast listeners do prefer audio only slightly more than our heavies. Our heavies are a little more likely to dabble in the video where they're watching actively or in the background. Uh, they spend so much time with podcasts, they're more likely to experiment with new forms of podcast consumption. And when it comes to preference for watchable video, it's a key driver in what platform they're going to use the most. So on the left hand side, we're looking at the audio only, and that's the 43% of our total weekly listeners. Overall, Apple is the most used platform. So they prefer Apple, 30% of them. A little less intuitive on Apple Podcasts to find the video versions of the show. So for there, it's going to be an audio only experience. And on the right, among those who prefer podcasts with a video that they're either watching or minimizing, they prefer YouTube. So 35%, that's their most used platform. YouTube is so ingrained and so associated with video that that makes sense. Uh, they want to go there, they want to watch videos, they want to watch podcasts. When it comes to their eyes on the screen, it's important to know that podcast listeners are watching and they do have their eyes on the screen when ads are playing. So this is a really attentive audience that advertisers can reach on podcast video. Nearly seven in 10 are looking at the screen at least some of the time, even during ads. Uh, that second set of bars there, 41%, they have their eyes on the screen most of the time during the episode and following very closely 31% of the time during ads they're watching. So this is a group that's really paying attention to what's on the screen even during ads. Comparing the data that we found this October to last October, we saw growth in having eyes on the screen too. So compared to last year where 11% were having their eyes on the screen the whole time, that's grown to 20%. So more podcast watchers are watching the screen. Um, and they're more engaged with content. When you take that into account and compare it to this study, this was done by Nielsen a few years ago, and this is looking at the percentage of time when TV ads are on the air. So 39% of the time the audience is watching, they have their eyes on the screen with the ads are airing, but 40% of the time they're maybe on a second screen, an iPad or a phone, or 21% of the time they're not even in the room, they're running for a snack. Um, so what you get when you are advertising in podcast video, you're getting a more attentive group versus TV here where 61% of the time those ads might not even be seen. And this is just looking at YouTube. So people were asked or our respondents were asked 
please identify the platform where, that you would associate that you can watch vid videos of your podcasts on. YouTube by far and away was the number one answer with 55%. After that, Spotify, 18%. Um, it is easy to find a video on Spotify for your podcast, less so with Apple, which explains why it's even less than that, 14%. And now Jeff is going to take us through some more information on preference. So just taking a look at uh, those podcast listeners, who are they, uh, the watchers? Um, and and the, the, those who prefer audio only, um, you know, we do skew younger if they're watchers and they're a little more male than those who prefer audio only. And we'll also take a look just at some of the genres that they um, prefer to watch or listen to. So um, looking at this table here, um, you see total weekly U.S. podcast listeners on the, on the left. So it shows you what um, the audience profile looks like for the U.S. Um, for, for weekly podcast listeners. And then to the right, we have on the left, the audio only without any video, video you can actively watch in the middle and video you can minimize or listen to in the background on the right. Um, and, you know, again, what we just said earlier, you can see that, you know, there's definitely a skew towards males among those who actively watch video, the middle column, 62% are men. And um, there's also a younger skew to those for those particularly actually who um, have video in that they minimize or listen to in the background. Um, while they're, the podcast is playing. They have, you know, 51% are 18 to 34. Um, and this is what, a, a, an idea of what kind of genres they say that they like to listen to on a regular basis. So again, same three columns, the prefer audio only on the left, those who actively watch videos in the center and uh, to the right, those who prefer listening to, uh, prefer um, having the videos on in the background. And this is just shows the ranking of them. Now there's some similarities here. You see comedy, news and current events are sort of up in the top three for everyone. But what you do see are some big differences. Those who prefer actively watching videos or, or even having them on in the background, um, music comes way up from you know number 10 in terms of favorite genre or preferred genre for those who prefer audio only, but it's number one or number two uh, for those who um, are actively engaged in video. Suggest there's an opportunity there um, for um, podcasts that have a video side that have a music component as well. Perhaps for the interviews, um, perhaps there's some expectation there of, and, and they would like to have some performances as part of that as well. Um, and again, there's rights issues there, but it's all possible. And then the, the sort of flip side of that is if we look at the audio only um, column, true crime is the number three um, um, a favorite genre um, for listening to on a regular basis among um, audio listeners. Now they do skew a bit more female, so that may be part of that, but also the more narrative aspect of um, a true crime podcast, you know, like maybe a history podcast or even fiction is just a little tougher to pull off um, easily on video um, uh, as opposed to comedy um, or music where it might, you know, or entertainment pop culture, even where you might just have conversations. And again, we see this, you know, replicated to a large extent um, when we actually look at what podcast people listen to. Again, this is from um, you know, more than 12,000 interviews we've done in the past year um, for Triton's Digital's Podcast Metrics Demos Plus uh, initiative. Uh, and, you know, if we look at this now, Apple Podcasts to represent those who are more likely to um, prefer audio only, um, YouTube in the middle, and then Spotify on the right. It's just kind of like a pairing it off a little bit. And we do see true crime among Apple Podcast listeners, number four. Um, uh, uh, and with 24% um, who say that they've listened to a true crime podcast at some point in the past month. Um, YouTube primary listeners, um, you know, again, we see music come up in a way that, you know, much we saw it with, as we saw it with those who actively watch video. And Spotify um, listeners, comedy is a big category for, for Spotify um, listeners. Most often, 47% say that they listen to comedy in the past week, but that's higher than what it is for either Apple Podcasts or YouTube. So we see some of the same patterns there between um, uh, those who favor audio and, and those who favor um, podcasts that have a video component. Podcast listeners, you know, you know, another superpower of podcast listeners is that they are deeply engaged. This is an engaged audience, and they, you know, seek out opportunities to connect with their podcast, with live events, um, social media, interacting with their favorite podcasts. And, you know, and we see it particularly when we look at hosts. Um, 
56% of weekly podcast listeners say that they follow um, one of their favorite hosts on social media. And the social media is, you know, a lot of the big ones here, Instagram, Facebook, still there, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, interestingly, I mean, you know, we saw this just in six months, 25%. Um, in April, 33% now. We expect that this is, you know, this is, this is like number five with a bullet. Um, it'll be interesting to see where it shows up when we're back here again, looking at this next April. But the key point here really being that podcast listeners are engaged with the podcast they listen to. And, you know, and also when we ask them how likely you would be to attend a live event for your favorite podcast in the next six months, 47% um, said that they would be very or somewhat likely, presumably if the podcast is performing in their area, or a live virtual event where they wouldn't have to be there physically, 55%. Um, we'd just like to have that um, connection um, to their favorite podcast. Uh, subscriptions, um, you know, another way that listeners can express their sense of engagement with the podcast. 31% of weekly podcast listeners say that they subscribe to at least one podcast. Um, 43, and then as a paid subscriber, not just as someone who follows it as a subscriber, but who's a paid subscriber. The heavy podcast listeners, um, even more likely to say that they are a paid subscriber to um, a podcast. That's a large number. Um, and again, subscribers, you know, it might be interpreted, this might be one-time donations that people are making as well, but clearly there's a sense of connection of, of paying some money um, to, to connect to um, with their favorite podcast. Uh, and what's interesting here, and I think it runs counter to a lot of the practice that you see in the industry, I think the sort of instant default thing is, okay, what people want from a paid subscription is they want an ad-free experience. Well, when we actually ask the question, we've asked this before, and we get very much the same results each time. When we ask which one of the following features, if any, would influence your decision to pay for podcasts the most, you know, exclusive original content, and exclusive access to podcast creators and hosts, that's 54%. Choose those two options. Only 23% um, say that the ad-free um, experience would be the one that is most important to them. Um, and, um, and there are others who really aren't necessarily interested in any you know, options that would be there. So of those who do you know, say, yes, uh, one of these things um, would be what I would really influence my decision, more than twice as many are going for content benefits uh, versus the ad-free experience. And, you know, what kind of content are they looking for? Or what kind of um, uh, benefits are they looking for? It really is content. Content is king here. Um, you know, uh, the extra content leads the list of exclusive benefits, bonus episodes, access to extended episodes, early access to episodes, behind the scenes content. Actually, all of that is ahead of things like um, exclusive physical merchandise or discounts on merchandise. It's about content. And, and again, um, you know, we looked at this previous slide. It's what we see reflected there. Ad free is really not as important as it would seem. And, and this actually lines up with other research that we've done in Canada with the Canadian podcast listeners as well. In fact, that study is just being released today. Um, and one thing we saw there is that, you know, support for the creator um, along with content was a much more powerful driver of subscriptions to those who are subscribing or those who might want to subscribe as well. And it does make you think that. Because you have a paywall, does that mean then that you can't have any advertiser presence? Um, Brian Berletta sounds profitable. It's just actually in a blog he had yesterday, it's part of a two-parter on subscriptions, uh, podcast subscriptions, made the point that, you know, could you not have a sponsor providing limited ad time um, and to support the podcast as part of that subscription? And really, there's really no reason why they can, all the data that we're seeing suggests that that's possible. Next, we're going to talk about podcast advertising in terms of ad-free video streaming audiences. Uh, these podcast listeners are big subscribers of platforms like Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Disney+. Plus. Overall, the weekly listener, they're going to spend nearly half of all of their video streaming, TV, all of their viewing time with ad-free video. So that's 45% of the time they're seeing no ads on their streaming. If you're an advertiser who is advertising in TV, you're never going to hit that group of people. That's why podcasts really is a great place to be for those advertisers. 
You're also going to be reaching cord cutters. So a third of the weekly podcast audience do not have a pay TV company subscription. They're not seeing cable ads. They're not seeing TV ads. Um, so if your buy is totally on TV, you're missing out on this giant group of people. And weekly podcast listeners are also avid users of streaming services overall. Uh, down at the bottom, those are ad supported, nearly 90%, 91% have used an ad free service and 93% have used just a general video streaming service in the past month. What that means is if you have a program, a tuning campaign, you want to get people watching your program, podcasts are a great place to advertise because they have a built in audience of these people who are already huge video streamers in their own right. This is a look at the platform specifically, and it's interesting to note of the top video streaming services, three of the top four are all ad free. So Netflix, Amazon Prime, and Disney Plus, all ad free. So these are people who are really engaged with these other platforms. If there are programs or tuning campaigns on there, this is a great place to reach those audiences. And when we look at heavy listeners versus our weekly, we see that the heavy listeners are even bigger fans of ad-free video streaming. On the left, 27% more likely to be a heavy ad-free TV streamer. That means that they've watched 11 hours in the past week compared to the 22% of the weeklies. The heavies are at 28. On the right, they spend 15% more time with ad-free TV streaming services, 11 hours among the heavy listeners compared to 10 hours among the weeklies. And an overview here of why podcast advertising is so important for subscription video, particularly ad-free. On the left, it's an ideal medium for reaching ad-free streaming audiences, 91%, a huge percentage of them, of weekly podcast listeners have used an ad-free streaming service in the past month. It's a great option for TV streaming tuning campaigns, 73% of weekly podcast listeners have spent at least three hours per week watching TV programs via these platforms. And on the right, you can reach cord cutters. And these are people who fall into that ad never section of linear TV. They're never gonna see the TV campaign. 29% of them don't have pay TV to see the network or cable TV ads. This is another study we've run with advertiser perceptions. We've done it for many years. This latest one was done in June, 2022, among 300 agencies and marketers, and it's all centered on podcast advertising. And overall, we saw consideration, intention, and usage are at all time highs. 87% have discussed podcast advertising as a potential for media investment. So these are conversations that are having, being had among agencies and brands. Half would definitely consider podcast advertising in the next six month, months, and half would definitely advertise and podcast in the next six months. And down at the bottom, 61% of agencies and brands are currently advertising in podcasts, again, an all-time high. That means if you're not advertising in podcasts, you are in the minority there, um, as most are currently advertising in the medium. This is a trended look back to when we first ran these questions in September of 2015. And what you see across the board is immense growth, particularly in discussion going from 41% back in 2015 up to 87% this year. Consideration is up from 18% years ago to 51. And again, half are actually uh, likely to actually advertise on podcasts compared to 2015 when only 10%. Uh, mostly, we want to point out down at the bottom there, currently advertised. Last year in November, 45% said they were currently advertising, and that's jumped up significantly to 61%. So again, advertising in podcasts is something that's happening more often and is definitely a hot topic among agencies and brands. So bringing it back to the listener, um, podcast listeners, um, they like ads, um, and, and that is one of them sort of unique about podcasting. They're less likely to avoid podcast ads than other digital media ads. Um, host read ads in particular are very important. And yet, and we'll get into this, um, we see an opportunity for more, for lack of a better term, fun and entertaining ads. 
first of all, one thing we can see is even with more and more ads coming into podcasting, um, the ad tolerance has stayed really quite level going back to July 2017. In fact, um, you know, listeners say in 60 minute podcast, their expectation of what they would consider to be appropriate for a podcast of 60 minutes is four different ads. That's the highest it's been actually since July 2017. So yes, they're hearing more ads, but they seem to feel that that's okay. I mean, there's been no pushback on that to any extent. 30 minute podcast, 2.7 ads is again, what the, you know, the listener on average um, sees as being the appropriate uh, number of ads for a podcast of those lengths. So still, um, and, and podcasting is still catching up to this to some extent, um, but, um, but, but again, we're still seeing very high ad receptivity um, and ad tolerance for podcast ads. The really key for a lot of podcast listeners, the ones they really prefer the most are uh, those ads that are voiced by the show's host. Uh, 48% given a choice between these three different types of ads and podcasts say they would prefer an ad voiced by the show host. Um, an ad that sounds like one heard an AM FM radio or an ad read by someone other than the host, that's, you know, down, you know, quite a bit lower. Um, and, you know, 17% really couldn't care less one way or the other. So host reads definitely way out in the lead, but again, only 48%. There still is a, an appetite and interest in, in other types of ads as well. But host read ads really are the, the Cadillac um, for podcast advertising. And they love it um, when those hosts have fun with the ads they read. On the left, you can see um, total weekly podcast listeners, 76% agree that they like it when the host has fun with the ads they read. 80% of the heavy podcast listeners agree with that statement. Um, and if you go to the right, to you know, even two thirds of heavy podcast listeners say they also like it when the podcast host recommends a product they use. It's not easy to get people to say, I like ads, but they certainly do like um, podcast ads and, and particularly um, when they're host read ads. But it goes deeper than that. And, and this is where we see a, a, an interesting opportunity. If you look at the left, the question we asked was, how interested are would you be in hearing the following types of ads? Going back to what they'd like to hear, what the hosts have fun with ads, you know, funny ads, entertaining ads, 74%, 72% say they're very or somewhat interested in hearing those types of ads. 63% for podcast ads that communicate features and benefits of products and services, which is really much more typical of the direct response advertising you hear on podcasts today. 63% um, for interesting story about the brand and, and, you know, at least on a top of mind basis, uh, an emotional story doesn't seem to have as much appeal as the others. We look at the right, this is now where you see the differences in, in a bit of a gap. Um, when you, we ask, think about the time you spend with podcasts, how often do you hear and, you know, the more rational podcast ads that communicate features and benefits of products and services, what people say, that's what I hear now. The funny and entertaining ads, they're a little further down that list. So you can see there's a difference here um, where their interest is and in, in what they're hearing now. There is an opportunity for more fun um, and entertaining ads. And, you know, Pierre Bouvard, um, you know, this, saw this finding and it inspired him to, um, or reminded him of, of a couple of, of quotes um, from some uh, marketing gurus, uh, Paul Feldwick and Harry Glock, Gossage, but really building on the same idea that that you know ads that entertain do make a difference. Um, um, you know they're often very effective. Um, you know it's you're really renting the stage on which we may perform. Howard Luck Gossage says, um, and and we do see that. I mean, with insurance ads on television, Geico, Progressive, uh, Liberty they're all about humor. It's really about entertaining you and they getting the ad across. But it's funny, a lot of those same insurance advertisers on podcasts are doing features and benefits. You wonder if there may be an opportunity there for them to take what they're doing in television in a different way, perhaps, and put it onto podcasts in a way that fits in the podcast environment. Um, podcast advertising also does, you know, encourage people to take action, um, you know, asking podcast listeners whether they've um, um, searched online for information about a product and service. You know, 50% of heavy podcast listeners say they've done that. That's the dark bar on the right. Total weekly podcast listeners is 
talking to word of mouth, talking to friends or acquaintances, also high, and just discovering a new product or service that they've never heard about before. A lot of podcast advertising is geared towards getting people to visit websites to sort of lower funnel activities, but a lot of what podcast advertising does is creates new awareness for new brands that are coming on as well. And, you know, those are sort of the big three in terms of actions that people take as a result of listening to podcast ads. And in total, if you add it all up, you know, 76%, more than three quarters of all weekly podcasts listeners say that they've taken some kind of an action after hearing a product or service advertised in a podcast. Heavy podcast listeners, they listen more often. 85% say they've taken some kind of action. And just to sort of wrap up, just one little bit of a sidebar before we get into uh, sort of wrapping up our presentation today. Um, one of the things that advertisers often express concern about is, well, how timely is the ad? How long will it be before that listener hears the ad that might have been baked into um, the, the podcast or um, you know, may have downloaded and not listened to later, even if it's a, a dynamically inserted ad? Um, and we've asked this question and, and, we, and we get the same answer all the time. And, and it is that most podcast listeners do listen to that podcast episode within 24 hours of release. You can see it here. Total weekly listeners, 73% say they will listen to that podcast, um, um, you, know, uh, you know, of their favorite podcasts um, within a day. Um, heavy listeners, 82% say they will. So again, Something that's not a major concern consideration um, is, is, is my ad still going to be timely when the audience is listening to it. So just to wrap things up, um, again, key takeaways, Spotify, YouTube, the leading podcast platforms, watchable podcasts, they're growing in popularity. It's all part of that YouTube thing. Um, West, weekly podcast listeners are listen, co-listening with their children. Um, brand safety is one of those things that, again, as far as the listener is concerned, um, you know, they they aren't that complaining about objectionable content because these are podcasts that they've chosen to listen to and they know what to expect. Um, podcast video ads offer an attentive alternative to linear ads, real opportunity there going forward. Podcast ads are going to capture those hard to reach ad free streamers. Our weekly listeners are also heavy viewers of ad free video streaming services. Our podcast listeners are eager to interact and engage. Most follow their favorite hosts on social media. Many plan to attend a live podcast event. And when they consider a paid subscription, the ad-free experience isn't as important to them as exclusive content and support of the show. The most compelling podcast genres differ between watchers and listeners. While video is growing in interest, there are some genres like true crime that uh, the listeners prefer the audio only experience. Advertiser use of podcast ads continues to grow at a breakneck pace, uh, the highest rates ever of discussion, consideration, and actual usage, 61% up over the past seven years. And funny and entertaining ads offer a creative opportunity while podcast listeners prefer these types of funny and humorous takes on ads, they're hearing more rational podcast ads. So there's the opportunity there to change creative strategy. And then just a few recommendations and next steps. One, you should be advertising in podcasts. If you aren't already considering, you should be, especially when you take into account agency and advertiser trends that we've seen. This is definitely a growing area. There's also been growth in daily reach. According to Edison Cherevere, 1849 adults have increased from 8%, 8.8 .8 in 2016, up to 28 in Q3 of this year. So podcasts are growing. Podcasters and publishers do need to consider um, video within their podcast planning. It may not be suitable for every podcast, um, but you know, as podcast listening grows, clearly video is a big part of that for so many of those listeners. And that does mean there's opportunity there if there's an opportunity for you. And even an audio-only podcast. Um, can consider, you know, video trailers as a tool to drive discovery to their audio feeds. Uh, for a lot of people, this is, YouTube is their one-stop entertainment information destination. That means it's the place that they may discover about new podcasts um, that they wouldn't discover if um, it, there wasn't some presence on YouTube. And just to elaborate on that, consider YouTube, even our audio-only podcast listeners 
are listening to YouTube, they have uh, the option of a video there. So a podcast can post a logo or a still of their show, any kind of visual, just so that they're in the feed with YouTube. Um, it's a great way to reach additional listeners. And, you know, for advertisers and for, you know, podcasters as well, there definitely will be opportunities to monetize podcasts with video going forward as it becomes, uh, you know, it is already part of the fabric and, and may become a bigger part of the fabric. Um, you know, the one thing we did see that was encouraging here comparing to Nielsen results was that video ads on podcasts do command even more attention um, than ads on linear TV. So there's a sales opportunity there as well. Podcast video is strong, but it's not necessarily for everyone. Uh, there still is a huge percentage of the weekly audience who do prefer that audio only experience. So it's important to take into consideration the genre. If you're something like a true crime podcast, uh, those tend to do better with an audience that prefers audio only. So when you're determining your strategy, keep in mind your genre, your audience preferences, and determine based on that. Uh Capitalizing on listen deep engagement I mean that superpower of podcasting that deep engagement listeners have with their must listen podcasts. Um, you know, a paid subscription could include some sponsorship revenue. Um, and, and, you know, and obviously there's all the other opportunities for you to connect with um, listeners on an engagement level. Um, podcast listeners are in it for the content. Um, exclusive content is really a key to that subscription offer, a much bigger driver um, than ad free content. Advertisers can use podcasts to reclaim consumers lost to ad-free video streaming. 91% uh, of weekly podcast listeners say they've watched an ad-free video streaming service in the past month. So this is really a place where podcasts are delivering heavy viewers of ad-free video streaming. And finally, just you know, consider advertising creative that has more of a fun and entertaining approach. We do see that gap in the research. Um, podcast listeners say they're more likely to hear the rational feature benefit podcast ads, but they would prefer the funny and entertaining ads. And, and just closing off with one of those quotes from Mark and the Guru, uh, Paul Feldwick in his book, Why Do the Ped Does the Peddler Sing? What Creativity Really Means in Advertising? Um, he says, advertising is at least as much showmanship as it is salesmanship, and it builds brands best when it is entertaining, popular, and memorable, when it is not just a pitch, but a performance. So thank you so much for joining us for this presentation of the podcast download. I'm going to throw it to Thomas to wrap up. Thanks so much, Lauren and Jeff. This was incredibly insightful. One of the common themes that really stood out to me throughout this discussion is how watchable podcasts have grown and how exciting that can be specifically for a brand partner, providing that additional level of integration potential. It's another amazing outlet for an advertiser to place their brand messaging while really reaching an incredible incredibly engaged podcast audience. Let's turn to the chat and field some questions. Um, the first question that I received was, it's clear that YouTube has become a big partner of the podcast landscape, but how can you sell that when you're not getting the currency of downloads? I think um, that one's for you, Thomas. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that one. In the sales chair. Yeah. I would say, I would sell this exactly this, the way I'm currently selling the podcast network and I would use one specific show or talent within the network to integrate the brand and then amplify the brand's messaging across um, the podcasts, the watchable podcasts, using um, some type of ad or video spot that they're trying to get their brand messaging across to allow for scale. So um, I would really focus in, like I said, on using one specific show or talent and then using the entire network kind of to get that, um, that full scale and depth and breadth of the um, of the audience. The next question I got was, you talk about brand safety not being a big issue for podcasts because listeners know and are comfortable with the content they're consuming, but isn't brand safety also about what content the company is comfortable about sponsoring? Yeah, I think obviously brand safety, brand suitability is a multifaceted thing. Um, and But you know, one of those concerns that, around brand safety, which is, Oh my goodness! What happens if they, you know, if the what I'm advertising is going to have content that they're going to find objectionable? That's one concern um, that brands don't have to have about podcasting. They can feel comfortable that people are going to content that they've chosen um, and that they have full expectation of what they're going to hear in that podcast. 
Wonderful. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you everyone for joining our presentation today. We very much look forward to sharing this with you via our blog. And if you should have any questions, our emails are on the screen. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for the chance to work with Cumulus Podcast Network on another uh, download study.